Here's a picture of Nicholas Copernicus. The thing that he is most famous for is publishing a book that described the heliocentric theory, or the heliocentric system, if you want to call it that. And helio comes from the Greek word for sun, and so this means sun-centered. So according to Copernicus, the sun would be at the center of the solar system, and then all the planets would orbit around the sun, including the earth and the moon. Well, he actually had the moon orbiting the earth, which is the way it is. The moon goes around the earth like that. But the sun is at the center, heliocentric theory. And again, as I mentioned before, the date of the publication of his book, 1543, is sometimes considered to be the end of the Middle Ages and the beginning of the modern era. Here's another picture of Copernicus. He was from Poland, and there are a lot of statues of him around, and this is a statue in Krakow, Poland. Here's a picture of Galileo. Galileo came along just after Copernicus. He lived in Italy. He also promoted the heliocentric theory, and he got in big trouble for it. Because the Aristotelian ideas were so thoroughly entrenched, both in the academic world and in the church, he got in trouble with the university professors and with the clergy, he got in trouble for promoting ideas that contradicted Aristotle. The big thing that we would remember him for now is for challenging, he challenged Aristotle's ideas. So Copernicus and Galileo were the first people to significantly challenge the dominance of Aristotelian thought. And then the guy who came along and basically put the nails in the coffin of Aristotelian thought was Isaac Newton. And here's a picture of him. Isaac Newton gave a correct explanation of just about everything. Correct explanation for these things. Uh, forces including the force of gravity. He correctly understood gravity and was able to describe it mathematically. Gave a correct explanation for motion and Newton's laws of motion. The three laws of motion are an important part of our understanding of the, the world. And he gave a correct understanding of the solar system. why planets move around the sun, not just that they do, but how the force of gravity holds them in their orbits. And he also developed a lot of new mathematics. And in particular, the mathematics that we know as calculus, which you typically study in college. Some people take it in the 12th grade, but he developed it, and it allowed a whole world of problems to be solved that mathematicians couldn't, couldn't have solved before. He put all these ideas down in one book, and it's called the Principia. And that's Latin for principles. The principles, and specifically the mathematical principles that describe the natural world. Newton was so significant that the ideas that we study today in a physics class are typically referred to as Newtonian physics. And the, the, the way that we think about the world is most often Newtonian. So let's look back at our timeline now, and let's look again at this period right here around the 1600s, well starting with Copernicus and going through the 1600s and on into the 1700s, the time of Copernicus, Galileo, and Newton. What I, what I, what I want you to know is that before that time, science was Aristotelian. It was based almost entirely on the ideas of Aristotle, and it was incorrect. After that time, science was Newtonian. And for hundreds of years after that, science was based almost entirely on the ideas of Isaac Newton, and it was largely correct, as far as we understand it today. In particular, a correct Newtonian explanation of motion is the first major topic in this course, and that's what we'll start looking at next.